whatever you wanted. Online and on demand, KFI AM640.com. Just in case you missed that last station ID, this is KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Captain Dale Dye, one of KFI's military guys, filling in for Brian Suits here on the Dark Secret Place. Brian will be back uh, next week in this time slot. In the meantime, we are talking to Fahim Fosley and Michael Moffat, co-authors of a terrific new book with some really eye-popping insights into the global war on terrorism in general, and the war in Afghanistan specifically. Fahim Fazli um, is Afghan-born, um, a naturalized citizen, very well assimilated into the country, but decided he ought to pay it back. He ought to go to uh, Afghanistan with the United States Marines, very difficult and dangerous assignment in Helmand Province with 3rd Battalion, 4th Marines. Um, and uh, served as an interpreter where he met Michael Moffat, um, at that time a uh, military historian touring the battlefields, uh, lieutenant colonel in the United States Marine Corps. They hit it off and uh, decided to write the book Fahim Speaks, which uh, is available uh, online. You can look it up, and you should look it up. But let's talk to the authors. Fahim, Michael, thanks very much, guys, for waiting around uh, through all that money-making and commercial break and so on. Thank you. Fahim, um, you are an actor and have wanted to be one uh, for a long time. Now, I have some experience with actors, and they can be uh, interesting folks. Uh, let's just uh, let it go at that. But you found that uh, your ability as an actor, as a performer, something you wanted to be uh, virtually most of your life, paid dividends when you returned to Afghanistan and became an interpreter for the Marines. How did that work? How did, how did your acting skills pay dividends when you had to go back uh, and deal with Afghans? When I was in Iron Man, working with Robert Downey Jr., John Favreau, and uh, Charlie Wilson World with Tom Hanks, uh, Julie Roberts, Philip Oppen, and Charlie Wilson himself, I was a culture technical advisor in Morocco for the movie Charlie Wilson World. And Charlie Wilson himself asked me, Fahim, you did a, such a great job as a culture technical advisor. You coached like seven, 800 Moroccan and speak Afghani to teach Tom Hang or Julie Roberts Philip uh, of the culture of your uh, country. Why don't you go help the real people, the real warriors in Afghanistan? And I was thinking about that. Yeah, if I work in Hollywood as a, uh, as a culture technical advisor, why I cannot go help the real warrior? Then I made a decision to go over there to use my uh, acting skill to, in Afghanistan when we were going village to village. And uh, with Captain Benson, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Michael Moffat, and I used my acting skill. That's why the Taliban didn't like it, because I made people laugh. I was try to bring Afghan people, civilian, towards us and make friends with uh, Marine Marines, make friends with them. I was using as much as I can using my acting skill. But first of all, I grew a beard and I put Marine uniform. That was kind of confusing for the Taliban. What kind of translator is this guy? A long beard, long hair, or American uniform. And I was using my skill, my acting skill. I was, was successfully, we did a lot of uh, villagers that didn't shoot us. We didn't shoot them back. We made a friend for them. We built a, our Marine, my Marine 3-4 build a road for them, dig a will for them, bring us electricity for them, and th that's why we were so successful. That wasn't only because of me, because of my three, four Marines, Captain Benson and General M M Nicholson was there uh, the time I was there. They did a, such a great job. Uh, I'm not going to give myself a credit. I'll give them a credit because usually uh, uh, people think, oh, we go or they kill. No, I saw in my own eyes. Marine, what they did to Afghanistan, what they get brought over there. And that's why we wrote this book, to prove it to American and around the world, to Marine do a lot of good things. Yeah, the, the, no book, the book, by the way, is Fahim Speaks, available online. Fahim, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that I found interesting in reading it, uh, Americans who haven't been to Afghanistan, and some who have, 
um, but didn't have a lot of contact with the Afghan people in in remote villages. Uh, th there's there's this image that uh, Afghans are dour people that they don't have any sense of humor. Um, that may be true about the Taliban, you know, who are brainwashed into uh, their beliefs. But it, it isn't true about villagers. And it was interesting to me that you could use that humor um, to sort of take an edge off of the situation. Did, did you do that very often? Uh, we, we, uh, I'll give you one example, uh, example Captain. We were in a one village in uh, uh, Elban province. Uh, one of the civilians came outside asking Captain, ask me if Captain Benson is an atheist like a Russian. Or, because when the Russian was there, they don't ask questions. They kill first. Then ask question. Uh, Captain Benson pulled his cross from his uh, neck and showed him. He said, "Yeah, we do believe Jesus. We do believe Mary. And we believe uh, Isa. We believe Abraham, Ishmael." And, and I explained to uh, asking uh, civilian. He was. He had a tear in his eyes. And he grabbed uh, Captain Benson, hugged him. You know, Captain, uh, uh, we have to educate those people. Those people uh, been brainwashed. Um, those civilians brainwashed by the Taliban or close-minded fundamentalists. I mean, I educate a couple of villagers over there. They welcome us. They brought us tea. They brought us. They hug us. They took a picture with us. Even Captain Benson was surprised. Uh, Captain Benson says, "Wow, what's going on here?" And so I explained it to them. I, I was telling about the culture, Afghan culture. Once you love them, they give their blood to you. But the problem is, the fundamentalists they brainwash them. They they don't educate them. They keep them dark spot. That's why this issue is going on in Afghanistan right now. Yeah, thank. I, and and you point that out so well in the book. The book is Fahim speaks. Michael Moffat. Um, Fahim clearly was. Uh, we only have a minute here, so so make your answer concise if you will. Um, Fahim was apparently very good at this. So good that the Taliban put a price on his head. Is that right? Yes, that's correct, Dale. And this is in the book. Uh, they were traveling around, and because Fahim had so much charisma and personality, and, and made people laugh, the Taliban especially hated him, and they uh, put a price of uh, three hundred thousand Afghanis on his head, which turned out to be six thousand dollars to whoever could kill him, which is a lot of money over there. And thank goodness, thank God, uh, he uh, he survived. Yeah, absolutely. And and he survived to write uh, with you a uh, a brilliant brilliant book. Uh, I'm so proud to have had uh, a little uh, hand in helping to bring it to Americans. The book is Fahim Speaks by Fahim Fosley and uh, Michael Moffat, both terrific guys, uh, both good American patriots and co-authors of a book you really need to read. Guys, thanks very much for being here with me on KFI. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you. That's um, an interesting book. A terrific book, a book you should read. Fahim Speaks. Look for it on uh, Amazon, any place else that uh, sells books uh, online. We'll come back and I'll give you some closing thoughts about uh, women in the military, about um, the situation in Afghanistan, and any number of other topics here on The Dark Secret Place. Captain Dale Dye filling in for Brian Suits on KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. I'm Michael Crozier, the KFI.